Shalom. Shalom, Zion. Shalom. It is the old girl with the old family. And testing, testing. Okay, so as you can see from the title, this is a very different video. Um, this video is about our personal business. So my husband had a heart attack um, last month, August 5th. And what's so crazy is our oldest son turned 17 on August 5th. So this day obviously sticks out. Let me slow down. Let me give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, our creator and our savior, whom we are in desperate need of a savior. Um, <laughs> so let's just get into it. And let me say this to any friends or family members who stumble upon this video, don't take it personally. It is what it is. You know what happened and you know the role you played in it. So, um, but yeah, to our viewers and subscribers, sometimes our family members watch our videos. So I'm not trying to like shade nobody, but we not going to cap. We're going to tell the truth about what happened. So my husband had a heart attack. He had an MI, myocardial infarction, but, but I'm not going to use healthcare terminology, okay? I'm going I'm to talk layman. So, basically, he had a blockage in one of his left arteries, and that's the worst to have a blockage in, but thank God he made it. Um, my husband is knocking on 50, not quite 50, a couple years, so technically, he's young to have a heart attack. Okay. He has a stent because the artery was 100% blocked. So he has a stent in his artery. A stent is like a piece of metal. Um, so if your artery is blocked, they put the stent in to open it, to get the blood flow through that, um, Excuse me, through that artery. Um, so you know, this is not an easy video to make, so forgive me. Um, but anyway, so if you don't know what a stent is, it's like just like a little piece of, of metal that they put in. In 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 his particular stent, which I'm gonna get into also secretes medicine. Now I haven't worked in the cath lab in years. So a lot of you know I have a healthcare background. So a lot of the things that happen to my husband I'm familiar with. Like I used to literally work in the cath lab. And that's where they the cardiac cath lab, that's where they do stints and um you know put you under to an extent to put the dye in your chest to see what's going on. And I'm trying not to get too technical because I know most people don't have a medical background. But I do, so forgive me for drifting one way or the other. So anyway, um, so let me slow down. So it was a Thursday, August 5th. We had so much going on. A lot of you all know the Most High just blessed us with a new house. But it's a fixer-upper. So we've had to do a lot of work. And my husband obviously was the, the lead in a lot of the work. And we didn't have a lot of help. We didn't have people who was willing to come help us, especially once the money ran out. Like when we had money to pay workers, we had little people working. But once that left, the people left, which was cool. Me and my husband did what we needed to do and our oldest son. But in the midst of all of this, we're still helping other people. I can't be too specific because I don't want to put people on blast. But, you know, you could have people around you who benefit from you. But when you need help, they just are not there to help you. So it was hot because it's August and we were having a big party that Sunday. So it happened on Thursday and we was having a party on Sunday. So sorry, y'all. Um, so anyway, with everything else we have, like we haven't even been in the house for a year. So. And it's a big house. I know this house like 
15, 1700 square feet. It's four bedrooms, two baths, and it's got a double lot. So it's huge. I'm, I'm telling you that just to say how much square footage and how much work. Damn near every room needed to be touched. But he had to completely gut the bathrooms, the kitchens. Like, it was a lot of work, okay? And again, it's a lot of males in my husband's family, but nobody offered to help us, you know, especially again, once the money ran low or even when we had the money, you know, people said it was going to work and didn't, whatever. Again, to any family members who see this video, don't take it personally. You know what happened. So, and then everybody in my husband's family knows. Okay. So side note. My husband's always been a hard worker. He's a carpenter. He went to school for it. He worked with his hands. He's really good and skilled in that area. But he has also other areas of expertise. And one of them was being an enforcer, a disciplinarian within his family. You know, my husband, um, for whatever reason, because this was established way before I met him, he's the one. You know, he's not the only brother, but... He's actually the youngest, but he's the one everybody calls to whoop somebody's ass, to get some kids in order, money, to move. Oh, my God. Moving people, lifting refrigerators, stoves, all of that. And he's done that for my father recently, actually, because um, my father has some health issues where he don't need to be lifting. So my husband and his brother actually moved my dad's up major appliances for him since we've been living in this house. So my husband has done a lot. He's worked hard a lot. And let me just give you a little taste of the type of stuff that he's done. And this is just a taste. Okay. So it's no sound. So I'll keep talking. So you, you can see the roof and my husband has worked on roofs. He's been a roofer. For, I think he did that for like 10 years. So currently he's not a roofer anymore. He's retired from that, but he has his own business he's running and it's still carpentry and that type of stuff. But this is our roof. This is the house that the Most High blessed us with that we just recently bought. And this is the footage of him up there by himself. He tore it off. And then he put the new roof on all by himself. He couldn't get anybody to help him. Even though, again, there's plenty of males in his family. No one was willing to help him. Fine, it's water under the bridge because the roof is done. Um, but it's just to say that what I'm trying to point out in this video is how much my husband would do and how you can have people around you, same name, same blood, but they're not going to be willing to help you. So with that being said, you need to be wise on how much you help and do for other people because these bodies are mortal. You know, they die daily, but it's the inward man that's renewed daily, according to 2 Corinthians. So these our bodies, this flesh is so weak, even in a strong Hebrew man like my husband, like our, our men. We know our men are the strongest. However, the Most High has everything preordained, predestined on how he wants to do things. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to run another video since there's no sound. This is another video of him working again, just to give you a taste of what he was doing. And he was doing all of this dolo, you know what I'm saying, by himself. <laughs> um, I offered to get up there. My husband didn't really trust me being up there because of the kind of roof we have. Our our oldest son did get up there too and help him too. But my our oldest son, he's 17, so he don't have that experience completely. This is him tearing off the old shingles. And again, this is my husband's area of expertise. But you gotta remember, he got a business he running. And when he get off, he rehabbing our house. And we all was. I mean, your girl do it all too. Don't, don't. You know what I'm saying? I'm not prissy like that. I can get down and dirty when need be. I grew up doing home improvement. My dad has always owned houses. I know that's why me and my brother got that spirit to always own houses and have our own properties. Um, 
So your girl get down and dirty too. I carry drywall, I tear out walls, floors, gutting bathrooms. Like even before I met my husband, I did this type of stuff on the weekends. Cause again, my father has always owned properties since I was a little girl. So, so back to August 5th, that day started off. Me and my husband was into it a little bit, just to keep it real. We was into it, basic marital stuff, nothing serious. And we wasn't like beefing. We just wasn't feeling each other that morning. Okay. So he got up, went to work. But we talked, you know, throughout the day, like peeped each other's vibe. We, you know, talking, we kicking it. Now that week, again, we are preparing for a party. So it's not like you getting ready to have a party or you just cleaning, doing some deep down cleaning, buying food. We like back to the rehab because we would take breaks in, in between projects, of course. Like after he did that roof, he got to chill for a minute. But we was having a big party centered around his mother, my mother-in-law. Um, she also has some health issues, but this is not about her. So I'm not going to, you know, go into detail about her health, her personal business. This is about our personal business. So he was throwing a party for his mother. So everybody was coming out of town, guests, all of that. So we was working even harder on the house to get it a little more fixed up before we had guests. Not that there's anything wrong with our house in its current condition. It's just, it's stuff that we one man bands. So it was only so much you can do because again, my husband got a job, a business that he's been running for years. And then, you know, I got two little kids. So it's only so much I can do. And I got tired and bitter. <laughs> like, I'm, so I had stopped. Because a lot of stuff I could do on my own. I don't need my husband like, your girl paint, that's nothing. Tearing out stuff, that's nothing. Carrying drywall, doors, like that stuff ain't nothing to me. I'm not a weak, lazy woman. I, I work physically whenever I need to. So I just got tired though. Like on top of the kids, it's to the point where my mother-in-law, she was my right hand, but she aged out. She can't be watching little kids like that that would be taking advantage of her. So I was in a position where I didn't have nobody to really watch my kids while I worked. And if you done any type of home improvement rehab, you know, it's easier when you ain't got little kids running around, you know, I'm painting my son walk by and it's painting the back of his head. Cause he done linked against the wall. So I had quit. I had quit working in our house and I like, forget it. Just keep this mud clean. That's good enough. So the party was Sunday. So this Thursday, so he working his business. Then he would come home working in the house. Now let's pause. Let's go backwards again. I know I'm all over the place, but my husband had a freaking heart attack. So I'm going to be all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Um, me and my husband used to smoke heavy. Used to. Okay. Back in the day. And before you get on your high horse, Everybody have sinned and fell short of the glory. All our righteousness is filthy rags. But at least I'm real enough to be able to say it, which most people that I know cannot openly admit any fault, any wrongdoing, let alone repent. Christian, non-Christian, say you believe, go to church every blue moon. Most people can't keep it real. Now, the Bible does say have out of many have one counselor. That's a rough translation. But the point is, yeah, you'll need to tell everybody your business. But one thing I have learned about people, and I'm going to say Hebrew people, black people, because that's who all I interact with, they not finna tell nothing that they've done that's wrong, okay? But I ain't that one. So anyway, we used to chief, okay? Blow a blunts. Yes, me and my husband used to. And we used to smoke um raps. They straight up. We we got something called straight up raps. It's all kind of different raps, swishers, backwoods, but that's what we used to smoke. Straight up blunt raps. And then my husband used to also smoke cigars, also, black and miles. Now, we've been in the truth for almost seven years. So this is old, but I'm just telling you because we don't know what contributed to the heart attack. No one knows the trigger, the cardiologist. No one can say, this is why you had a heart attack. It's lifestyle, diet, smoking, stress, 
nobody, but nobody can pinpoint. So that's why I'm telling y'all that because we don't know. Now, obviously my husband can't smoke, excuse me, stop smoking. You know, we done stopped smoking, you know, ups and downs, quit for a year, start back up and down, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but my husband is no longer smoking. All praise to the most high. Hasn't been. But I'm bringing it up because we did it for years. So how do we know that he wasn't getting that blockage and it slowly progressed? So just to put our past history out there, we used to smoke a lot. Now, I ain't never smoked cigars, but my husband used to smoke cigars and weed. And then, of course, I smoked weed. Then the enforcer stuff about him being a big disciplinarian in his family, which causes stress, hollering, yelling, elevating your voice, not knowing when to rest, being mad all the time. I'm bringing that up because I also think this, these are contributing factors to what happened to my husband, okay? People call him people, meaning his siblings. Like he got one sister, may she rest in peace. I was around, so I remember her calling him because most people's fathers wasn't around. And she had four boys by the time I came around, but she had five. And my husband used to be a disciplinarian for his sisters. You know how that go. Your sisters, I don't have any sisters, but, you know, I'm sure it's not just his family where you have a sister and she got sons, but they daddy's not around. So you call uncle, you call your big brother. So, you know, I've witnessed my husband being called by his sisters to get his nephews. You know, on top of my husband has had, excuse me, three adult children. One of them passed away. May he rest in peace. So my husband got nephews, sometimes nieces. He's asked to discipline. He's got boyfriends, exes, baby daddies. He done had to beat up and discipline for different reasons. You know, I'm not going to say his sisters were wrong. That's not what this is about. It's about what my husband's life has been leading up to the heart attack. I've, I've praised the most high. I've never seen my husband beat nobody ass. And I don't ever really want to see it. But y'all know how our men is. My husband ain't no exception. I ain't got to tell y'all how they can get down and throw them hands or whatever. And my husband didn't get his nickname for no reason. OG has been his name for years and years and years. So he used to whoop a lot of ass. Not that he caused it, but he just had a rough upbringing. It was times where he went to the store. I remember when I first met him, he went to the store and came back and he had gotten into a fight. And I'm like, what the hell? Well, he had seen somebody who knew his people from back in their thuggish days. And then sisters, you know, baby daddy's boyfriends had to jump on. So he done had to fight a lot, a whole lot. So he got good at it. So my husband has just had to deal with a lot. Excuse me. So these are other things that has contributed to his heart attack. Him stressing. Stressing over his sisters. What they doing how they raised their naked kids, his brother, his mama, his daddy, may he rest in peace, issues that he didn't get to discuss with his father before his father died, his grown sons, our kids, me stressing him, you know. So he's dealt with a lot. So back to Thursday, August 5th. So my husband go to work. He work at his job, you know, his business. He come home. He Then he go to Home Depot. Then he come back and he carrying wood, bringing stuff, whatever, because we working inside, outside, like everybody working, working, working. We were supposed to paint, finish painting because I started painting, but I had quit. So, but my husband bought the sprayer that I had been told him to buy, but he had bought the sprayer more so for his business. And so I'm like, okay, I'll resume painting because I had painted the whole downstairs well prime excuse me I primed the whole downstairs in preparation for painting but I got tired because I was painting with a roller we got stucco popcorn I'm like you can't paint this with no regular roller like it was just a lot so and then we got 
we had some ignorant, well, they still there, ignorant ass neighbors, but they just, I think the lady who lived here that we bought this house from was a single mother. And I think they just did whatever. And you know how, when you move, you have to let people know, I don't know what was going on before, but it ain't going on here. And we got a, a big lot. And so I guess people, I don't know if they think we got a, too much space. So they want to park all just that type of stuff. So my husband exchanged words with a female. And usually he don't do that. He usually, he talked to the man because it's a man who live in that house. But he always got company. It's the Kool-Aid house type of thing. If you're old enough to know that term. But he have a lot of company. He's a bachelor. He live across the street. But all his stuff takes place over here. And my husband's talked to him multiple times. And you know how men are one-on-one. -on -one. You ain't trying to embarrass nobody. So the neighbor moved his stuff. He run a business too. He a mechanic. So all his cars, he want to jack them up in front of our house, that type of stuff. So my husband talked to him, got that straight. But his sister came over and she was parked, you know, kind of too close to our driveway and my husband don't play that you're gonna respect this property line our driveway and forward you don't need to be right there there's plenty of other places to park we have a block where parking is on both sides of the street and everyone has a driveway that could fit multiple cars because i know our driveway can fit about 10 cars but i do know everybody house ain't as big as ours but the point is he can get three cars in his driveway at least plus the front of his house old girl parked too close to our house my husband asked her to move she like giving him back talk but he know how to deal with people so he got her to move but she was talking shit afterwards so he by her being a female he come get me he come get me he tell me about it i'm like okay so i come out sad you can still hear her talking shit so i'm like how i usually dress i got on a dress i'm holding my baby i'm like okay let me go put my baby down and let me go put on some fight clothes. And you could judge me for that if you like. But sometimes shit get real. Okay. So I'm like, let me go put on some fight clothes. Take my little jewelry off, whatever. And tell my oldest son what's going on. Because he in the back working, cutting grass, getting the yard together for the party. And this, I'm telling you this in detail because this is the moments leading up to it. My husband hype. He mad as hell. So he came and got me. So I came outside. And like I said, the girl still was talking shit. And I don't really like to fight in dresses because I just feel like, yeah. So I went to go put on some pants. But it took me a minute because I ain't got a lot of pants. And I've lost weight. So I'm like, let me find something. You know, you don't want your body exposed. when you. And that's why we ain't supposed to be fighting. Like, I completely get that. But... It's the time for everything under the sun. Okay, baby, it's the time to fight. And it's the time not to fight. It's the time for war. It's the time for peace. It's the time to love. It's the time to hate. So I changed clothes, but it took me a minute. By the time I put on some fighting clothes, that's what I call it, which is jeans and t-shirt, because I don't dress like that normally. So to me, that's fighting clothes, jeans and t-shirt, gym shoes. And I took my earrings and stuff off. By the time I came outside, my husband's demeanor was completely different. I'm like, what happened? You don't fight no more? Should I go, you know, confront the girl? Should we, like, what's, what we going to do? But his demeanor was so different. He like, no, nah, forget it. I'm like, forget it? You all hype? You called me out and chase me and took my earrings out? Boy, I'm ready to fight now. So he like, you know, no, nah, forget it. But he seemed weird. Like he out of breath. Now it's hot. He working. So I'm like, okay. So I had just started trying to well, put some dinner on. So I'm like, well, I'm going to go back to this chicken that I'm, you know. And so he like, okay. And then he laid on the hood of the car. Like, you know, just laying there to chill for a minute. So then I think I like came back to check on him or something. And he was like, he was hot and tired and thought he needed to take a break. I'm like, well, come in the house and lay down on the couch, take a break. So he came in the house, laid down, put the fan on him. He's sweating profusely. He, you know, like he hot. So we get him some cold water. He drinks the water, but he like, he don't feel right. And I'm like, okay, well, just chill. Maybe you need to rest. So 
the house is pretty big, like I said. So here in the living room, I go to the kitchen, which is the back of the house, because I'm trying to get some food on. He screams my name. So I come in there. I'm like, what? He's like, something don't feel right. My chest hurts. And I'm like, maybe you got a little heartburn because my husband loves fish. He is a fish. Swim like a fish, love to eat fish. And so he loves to eat fried perch and bluegill fish. But he's been eating a lot of fried perch because he got a contract. He got a big contract with this lady. So he's been flipping this lady townhouses for a minute. And it's a fish joint, like a fried fish joint. We live in Detroit. So I don't know where you live, if they have that type of stuff. But it's like fried fish, fried chicken joints everywhere. Excuse me. And my husband pretty much made that his lunch daily. Fried fish. I don't fry food really ever. Um, and I'm going to get into that. Like, we healthy around here. So it's not like my husband eating fried food like that. He just really loved fish. And it was convenient. So just to add that in, I thought maybe it was heartburn. So I'm like, you know, maybe you're having a little heartburn. You need to burp. You got a little indigestion. Um, and he was like, he don't know. He ain't feel right. He wanted, he was going to go upstairs. And so I'm like, okay. So I go get my oldest son, scrap the fight. Don't worry about that. We ain't fighting no more. Go keep an eye on your daddy. Your daddy said, you know, he ain't quite feeling right. I'm going to go to the store and get him something because I don't think I had nothing for indigestion. Because we don't really get indigestion. So my husband, like, you know, his chest hurting and his chest hurting. He feel like he can't really breathe. I'm like, well, that sounds like heart attack symptoms, but nah, you probably just mixing it with indigestion. So, but I told my oldest son, come keep an eye on your daddy because I don't know. And he like, you know, he don't feel right. So he come upstairs to go to the bathroom and I'm thinking maybe he need to burp, use the bathroom, it's indigestion. But he kept saying his chest was hurt. And I'm like, that's heart attack symptoms. Let me go get a baby aspirin for you just to put our mind at ease. So take note, baby aspirin needs to be chewed in the event, you know, of chest pain not Tylenol, aspirin. So, but I didn't have any because we don't really, we're not really sick around here. We don't really have ailments for real. And so I go to the gas station. I didn't really think my husband was having nothing for real, but the spirit knew because I started running. Because even though I doubted it, my nursing intuition kicked in as far as the time. Like I told y'all, I used to work in the OR and in the cath lab back in my early 20s. So, but I mean, you ain't got to be in healthcare to know. Heart attacks, certain things are time. You don't have, you can't play with time if somebody has chest pain, okay? Because they're losing, their oxygen saturation is slowly going down. So, I run to the car. I fly to the gas station. I run in the gas station. I run back, park crazy, run up in the house. My husband had went to the bathroom. So I'm thinking that was all. But still, take this baby aspirin. Well, I couldn't even get a baby aspirin. They didn't have it, so I had to get a 325. So take note of that. It, a baby aspirin is 81 milligrams. What I gave my husband was 325, a higher dose. So I knew any little chest pain, whatever he think he having, little angina, this ain't nothing. He taking a 325, so this really going to kill it. He chewed it, swallowed it. I watched him. He like, "Mm -mm, my chest hurting. You need to take me to the hospital. I'm like, boy, you fine. That's just some indigestion. And my husband shook his head. He was like, "Uh uh-uh. I want to go to the hospital. And when he said that, I was like, okay, it's something wrong with him. Because my husband, like most men, they ain't trying to go to them hospitals. They ain't dealing with doctors. None of that. And my husband definitely neglected his health care. Let me slow down and say that. All these years, I've been fighting him. Go to the doctor. See about this. You complaining about this. No, I don't want to go. They going to do this. They going to do that. You know how they look down on our people. They talk down to you. You know. So he put that off. So, yeah. So anyway, I take him seriously. My oldest son know everything's going on. He can hold the house down. Thank the Lord. 
the hospital is probably not even five minutes from here. And it is not the best rated hospital. You know how people talk crap about the hospitals. But in our case, they took care of my husband. He, them heathens took care of my man. The most high was with us even in this. So my husband, well, no, I ain't do it. My husband walked. We helped him, you know, get his shoes and stuff on. He walked to the car by himself. And I got in the car and drove. As I was driving, it started getting worse. He was clutching. So everybody know that sign, the person do this, they're clutching. You know how we do when something hurt, we grab it. So he like this in the car. I could tell he's in agony and now I'm freaking out. But I got to suck that in because you can't panic. So I'm praying. I'm, I'm, I ain't in the ambulance, so I'm trying. I got to watch how I'm driving to an extent, but I'm flying. Your girl pull up to the main entrance. Oh, I'm pissed. Go around to find the ER. My husband like, hurry up. I'm like, Mosai, I know you ain't going to let my husband die in front of my face. This is the conversation we having in the car. I get him to ER. Hurry up and get him in a wheelchair, get him in like chest pain. You know, he having a heart attack. They take my husband, of course, security. Uh, is that your car? I'm like, nigga, you know, that's my car. You just saw me pull up. I'm finna move it. I go move my car. I come double back to find my husband. Of course, he back here. You can't go back here. COVID, blah, blah, blah. I ended up, somebody came and got me. I get to my husband. They got him on the EKG, and now the siren's going off. Code. They calling their people. My husband, I had a heart attack. I worked in the hospital, so I know it. When I heard the lights go off, now I'm rusty. I couldn't see exactly what was going on that EKG strip. But when I heard the code, I knew it was for him. They pushed my husband in, and they was trying to push me out. He got the act of the fool. Y'all know how people do. He's screaming. Because first thing he think, they finna give me the back. The back. <laughs> okay. So, he tripping a little bit. But they took care of him. You know. So, long story short, he had a heart attack. Um, He was 100% blocked in that artery. He had to immediately have surgery. So, I had a matter of seconds to like digest what was happening, sign off because he refused to sign anything because he didn't know what he was signing. So he wouldn't sign nothing. <laughs> and then they made me leave. And so he got the scream out. I want my wife in here because he, my husband don't have a medical background either. So, you know, it's nice to have someone who kind of know the lingo, the understand the medical terminology to know what's going on. So I'm in a waiting room, right? <laughs> I'm in a waiting room. I'm sweating. I'm nervous, I'm scared, and I'm alone. I call my oldest son to tell him what's going on. Then I call my mother for comfort. My mother's a Christian, but I still needed comfort from somebody who believed. She started speaking in tongues, which makes me very uncomfortable because I know what the scriptures say. So I don't believe in people speaking in an unknown tongue, especially without somebody being there to translate it because the scriptures says somebody else is supposed to be there to translate it. So I don't believe in speaking in tongues and babble. I believe in tongues being another language and the spirit of God, you know, having somebody to interpret it according to Paul's writings. I don't know what book you would have to look it up. So even in that, I just had to ignore the tongues, you know what I'm saying? Because I needed comfort before I could call my husband's people. So... They come out, they talking to me, but I didn't like the way they was talking to me. It was too much fluff. I'm like, and I usually don't do this, but I'm like, look, I'm a nurse. Give it to me straight. Don't give me no fluff. So they start talking to me for real. I start talking to them for real. And then they realized I wasn't the one. So they brought me into my husband because they're like, you know, any other questions? I'm like, yeah. How about you let me see my husband? And they was like, sure, why not? So at that point, point I was pretty much able to stay with my husband by his side which is not really allowed so the most high really really blessed like the doctors the surgeons the cardiologists they put so much respect on my name they let me come in and see 
everything, my husband's heart, the contrast dye, the imaging, like they let me come in the back. It was some black nurses who was mad telling me I could just look it up on YouTube. They didn't understand why I was being back there while the doctor's taking all that time to talk to me and explain to me. Yeah. In the midst of my husband having a heart attack, I had a black bitch tell me I can just look on YouTube. And I'm like, but I ignored her and kept listening to the cardiologist because I'm like, that's our people for you, right? Y'all so mad about me being here. Even though everybody know he having a heart attack. And, and it, I ain't even going to say everybody. It was that one black lady. Most everybody else wasn't even really tripping. But it was, again, after hours also. Visiting hours was over at 6. You know, this 10 o'clock at night, I'm waiting on my husband to come out of surgery because they didn't know if he was going to need uh, open heart surgery or just a stent. You know, they they really had to get him up there. But they had stabilized him. So I was with him. We was talking. You know, but he was very afraid he was scared he wasn't in control and when they went to start the iv line that's when he freaked because in his mind they giving me the you know so my husband got stabilized he spent his entire hospital visit in the icu they didn't have beds so he stayed in the icu so i basically lived in the icu from thursday to sunday when he was sent home um so my husband, I told y'all, my husband has two grown children living that are, you know, not my children. So I had to call his grown sons, tell them. Um, I had to call his mother, you know, his brothers, his brother, and let them know what was going on, which was not easy. It was difficult to call my mother-in-law to tell her her son just had a heart attack because I didn't want her to get too worked up. My sister-in-law came and it was nice because we hadn't really been talking. We had some disagreements from when we all lived in Ghana and we hadn't really been talking, but it was nice for her to come out to the hospital. She did. She came out, I think three days in a row, checked on my husband, checked on me and was kind of, you know, like a support. So it was nice, Jennifer, to have you, you know, come out to support, you know, even though sometimes we're not in the best space with people when shit hit the fan, I think it's very mature of people to put that aside and kind of just be there, which she did. This is my husband's sister that's right underneath him. Um, I'm standing in the waiting room. My husband, I'm waiting on him to come out of surgery. And this family members who want to know about the party. What's up with the party? It was people who, once they got wind, that the party was canceled. They didn't want to come to town. They didn't want to come visit. And so anyway, I became bitter. I became so angry at my husband. I was so mad at him that I had a panic attack and I ended up in the hospital. So Sunday, me and my husband was in the same hospital together. I went via ambulance because I was a little concerned with having a stroke. I knew I had a panic attack, but my mouth, I couldn't speak like open my mouth. It was very limited on how I could open my mouth and my hands and stuff was really contracted. So I thought I was having a stroke. So I ended up pulling my car over and um, calling the EMS. I made it home. They put some oxygen on me, told me it was just a bad panic attack and that I needed some Xanax or Valium, something to help me calm down. So I went to ER, but it was a bad car accident with some kids, and I ended up just having to, like, calm myself down. I didn't take anything, but I was taken via the ambulance to ER, and I was given oxygen because I just really needed to calm down, but I was so mad, and I called my friend to vent, and I guess I went too, too hard because I held that shit in for so long that by the time Sunday came when it was time to vent, I vented too much and had a panic attack my damn self. I'd like to say this too. My husband was in the hospital from Thursday to Sunday. I had a panic attack. Only my close family knows this. So if any of our other family members watch this, now they know. But do you know I was in the ER having a panic attack and I called my mom and she offered me prayer. My mother hasn't came to see me. 
She hasn't came to help me in any way. And I find that very disturbing because the scriptures say, if somebody need food, you give it to them. You don't say you're going to pray for them. And my mother's a Christian. So I guess she's doing what Christians do. But she offered me prayer and told me how I need to get rest. And I'm like, I got a two-year-old. If I try to take a nap, do you know the kind of massacre? Like, you can't just sleep. You have little kids. They have to be watched. But she told me she was going to pray for me. So my mother offered me prayers just to show you what it is out here with people. Family, friends, so-called friends. People do not give a damn about you, what you got going on. You can have a heart attack and people could be like, is the party still happening? The party's still popping off. Um, I'm going to try to wrap this up because, you know, we got other stuff going on. The kids is up. And I think my husband needs to get to work. He just got back from doctor's appointment. So, you know, praise the most high just to speed things up. Um, nobody has really came to help us outside of his job. This lady he working for, she came and brought us a sympathy card, a couple of dollars and a little bit of food. And I just remember back in the day, if nothing else, people would bring you some food, a pan, a chicken, a pot, a pan, a spaghetti, something, you know, because in the midst of that, I still had to cook. The Sabbath happened because it was from Thursday to Sunday. I still had the Sabbath prep. My kids still wanted to eat. I still had to go to grocery stores. I still had to do everything on top of going to see my husband in the hospital, being there for him. The hospital food garbage, plus you can't trust it. You know, they sneak pork and everything, making sure he has decent quality food to eat, helping him out because the hospital was only going to do so much. But even in that, he had decent nurses, doctors. They didn't treat him bad. They took care of my husband. His insurance has taken care of everything. We don't have out-of-pocket expenses. He is on pills. He takes Four pills a day, we're told in a year that could be cut. Um, he has to go to rehab. So he doesn't have any physical disabilities, as you've seen. You know, you wouldn't be able to tell just by looking at him. He does still have a blockage in another artery, um, which is, you know, something that concerns me. So our life has changed from August the 5th. Nothing is the same. And one of the biggest things that has changed is how we view people, family or not. Because again, ain't nobody came over here to help us do a goddamn thing since this happened. No one. Again, I was offered prayers from my mother. Um, people have called and checked how he doing, what's going on. You know, his cousins, certain people put posts on Facebook and call him, but put posts on Facebook. He got aunties, people out of town who call his brother to see what's going on. Won't call him directly, you know, and with that, that's an indictment on the individual. How are you going to call me to find out how he's doing? You can call him directly. You know, other than you fishing, just trying to get information just to be nosy. Because I feel like Thursday, Friday, when it first jumped off, everybody just wanted to be nosy. Just wanted to know what happened. That was it. And then on to the next hot topic. So for me, I feel like a lot of people, and this is why I didn't tell a lot of people. There's a lot of people that don't know. And most of them don't watch our videos for real. So they probably will never know. But a lot of people I didn't even tell because what's your motive? Why you want to know? You don't care about my husband. You ain't even man or woman enough to call him directly. And you're supposed to be his blood. He got blood relatives still who have not called him, but called other people to find out what happened, which I find to be weak on that person and the individual who gave them the information. Because you ain't got enough discernment to know that they just trying to pump you for information. Call him directly. He's not disfigured. He didn't have a stroke to where he can't speak or nothing like that. He was a little weak after surgery and that was it. He's gaining weight. He's stronger now. And he got his priority in check on who to put all that energy into. Because everybody just ain't worth your time and energy. Because when your ass go down, the most they're going to be there for is to know what happened. And that's it. Or offer you some prayers like I was offered prayers. I'm sorry, but you offer me Christian prayers. Don't help me get sleep. 
prayers don't stop my kids from doing bad stuff to where I need to be up watching them, even though I'm sleepy. And you'll have people who do for others. They'll go see about somebody else in the hospital. They'll go see about somebody else. They'll do stuff for somebody else. But for you, the person who do stuff for them, they ain't trying to do nothing for you. Mind you, my husband had a, a whole business. So when he went to the hospital, unfortunately, his business became at a halt, a standstill. Didn't have to be, but it did. So it's just so many people who show their true colors that they ain't shit, that they some motherfucking users. Even though they all, we all share the same blood and last name, they ain't really about him. They was about what they could benefit from him or what he could do for them. And now that that's being lessened, they ghosts. But again, the most high has made our family unit stronger, meaning me, my husband, and our three kids who live in our house. And we put our priorities first. Fuck y'all. And when I say fuck y'all, I don't mean y'all. I mean anybody who want to call and ask us for favors, but know what just happened. I had a family member who called me and asked me for a favor right after it happened. We kind of do business together with real estate and I got a call for that. Now the most high tow that shit up, but yeah, I had somebody call me. Matter of fact, my husband's heart attack was the fifth. They called me for some, for some business ventures on August the 8th. August the 8th. Yep. So that's how people will do you. Oh, how he doing? Uh-huh, he all right. And you keep listening to the conversation, they get to the point of what they really want, what they call for in the first place. A little lemon water is always good to start the day with. So... It just really showed us that most of the people around us ain't shit. They don't mean us no good. They just want whatever little crumbs or whatever they can benefit from us. Whether it be my husband helping them with work, putting them up on jobs. My husband had damn near every male in his family and mine working on the roof with him back when he worked on the roof. Sure did. He done got them all jobs. My husband, even now with him running his own construction business, do work for people, family, ain't even called him to say, I heard, how you doing? Excuse me, his grown kids. You know, their response was, you know, but I know people, this is a YOLO society, everybody doing them. And again, you have some people who call, but I ain't trying to be funny, but them calls just didn't seem too genuine. It was more so just wanting to know what was going on because niggas was willing to come out of town for the party. Niggas still wanted to have the party. Remember, I said my husband was in the surgery. He was still in the operating room and I'm in the waiting room trying to figure out, did they cut my husband's chest open? Did he have to have open heart surgery or is it just a stent, which is less invasive? And I got people asking me about the party. And I'm looking at my phone like, what party? (laughs) Yeah, okay. And then I stressed so much, I sent myself to the fucking ER. So I became bitter at my husband because I feel like all this time, all this energy you spent and all this other shit, you could have spent it focusing on what's really important, us and ours. Because as you can see, who here for you and who ain't? And who just want to be nosy and have something to talk about because it's the hottest topic. How the fuck do you post about my husband having a health scare, praying hands, all this on Facebook, but you ain't even call him? How do you call his brother to see what happened? I don't understand that other than that's fake as hell. But... You know, moving forward, we got to take better care of ourselves. We know we in captivity, the land of fucking death. If you in America anyway, if you on the islands or if you are on the continent, you way better off. You may not have as much money, but at least your food ain't poison. At least they ain't poison the air as much in the water. You know, it's a lot. Again, it's a lot of contributors and factors. So let me say this for any of y'all who want to pop off at the mouth and talk shit because the first thing I had people at questioning me was our, our diet. Like, I thought y'all eat healthy. I'm like, yeah, we do. We do. But six to seven years of eating healthy versus 
30 years of eating garbage, you know what I'm saying, on top of stressing. Remember I said we had a little beef with the neighbor right before that. My husband working his ass off to fix up our house, plus he running his business because I haven't been working since COVID or whatever, per my husband's choice. Like I said, I'm not lazy. I don't just sit on my ass. I work. So, you know, he took on a lot because he's the man, he's the leader, but he had to learn his limits and to listen to his body. You tap, take a break, go take a nap, quit fighting your sleep. It's okay to take a nap. It's okay to take a day off. It's okay to take time off, but it's not okay to run to everybody else's problems and try to help mediate and fix other people's problems. Then when you got a problem, ain't nobody there to help you. When you got some work, ain't nobody there to help you. Or you work, then they get paid. Now they ghost for a while. They can't work no more. Or you always got to take the lead. My husband is not the oldest. He has siblings older than him. I mean, one of them is deceased, but my husband is not the oldest. But he's called upon all the time. But that's on him to learn not to let people use him. Because it'd be the people close to us we allow to get in that close to use us. Then you sit back and think about it like, damn, they was using me. It's no other way you can slice it. You were using me. Because where are you when I need you? Oh, you don't like hospitals? I wouldn't give a fuck if you like a hospital or not, nigga. I'm on my back. Where are you? Because when you was down and out, I came and reached down and, and brought you back, to, resurrected your ass from the dead. But that's on us at this point. I can't blame other people no more. Our eyes is open. So now it's on me and him. Like I told my husband a couple of days ago, he had a family member out of town call him with some shit in the wee hours of the morning. And I'm like, nah, you ain't learned by now. Why the hell is you even answering your phone? Especially once you pick it up two, three in the morning, you realize everybody okay. It's some foolishness. You ain't getting that energy. That energy belongs to me and our children. Because we still got two little kids. If something happened to my husband right now, our seven-year-old will have vague memories. And our two-year-old probably would never even remember him. So we have to do better with our bodies, our temples that the Lord gave us. I'm going to wrap this up. For time's sake, I could go so much more in depth, but I want to say this. I know there is spiritual reasons and implications behind things, and I've been praying, and I don't know yet what's the reason other than the obvious. My husband got a de-stress. He can't be the enforcer in his family no more. He can't whoop everybody ass no more. He can't do it, but I don't know spiritually why the most I had it happen to my husband at less than 50 years old. I don't know what it is that my husband was doing that because this changed our lives. It halted everything. You know, my husband got to take his blood pressure every day. He going to he got to go to the doctor a lot. He has a fucking cardiologist, a heart doctor, a specialist, you know. So it's a lot. We've had issues with insurance, getting his medicine. My husband got a pill that he got to take twice a day. And they tell him if he don't take this pill, if he go one day without this pill, he die. And I don't know if that's a fear tactic or if it's true because the stint he, that he has is a, it's a modern stint, if I could use that word. It's not the stint that I was used to back when I worked in this area, this specialty area. So I don't even really know about these kind of stints that secrete medicine on its own. This, you know, some things are new to me because they make new medicines all the time. So I had to read and do more research myself because y'all know how we roll. I don't care what they say. I'm going to read. The Lord gave me a mind. I'm going to read and do my own research. And that's why I said the most high blessed even in this because I don't see where they've done anything but other trying to save my husband. The, the heathens there, you know, one heathen was like, I'm the same age as your husband, even though he looked way older. Y'all know how they look. But my point is, I felt like he got excellent care. So I praise the most high in that I praise the most high that I kept my faculties because it was hard. It was very hard for me to not have my husband home in the bed, to have to do the Sabbath without him, to not have him here. Just that protection, that, you know, sense of everything. I mean, if we got, of course, we, you know, we got locks and security cameras and our property fenced in, but still 
that that reassurance and protection that he provides, he was gone from Thursday to Sunday. And then I got so mad at him the day he got out the hospital. I was yelling at him. We got into it real bad because I was just so bitter because I just felt like it didn't have to be this way. And I felt like I had been trying to tell him, but he wasn't listening to me. And I'm I'm still young, you know. I'm I'm in my early 30s. So for me, I was afraid to lose my husband. Like I'm too young to be a widow. I can't deal with this. I'm not really prepared to be without him. I'm not gonna start over. I've been with him since I was 18. And we got married at when I was 19. What the hell? I ain't never lived with no other man. So it's just so much that I can say on the subject. But what I what I want to stress is, because I'm going to keep it real. I know a lot of our people still smoke and they smoke weed. Because I told my stepsons, when I called them in the hospital waiting room, I told my stepsons, I know y'all blowing blunts, chiefing real hard. Leave them damn blunt wraps alone. It's so much poison in that stuff. Find you a more natural way to consume marijuana, whether it's um, teas, edibles, um, the rubs. You know, they got it in all different forms, but leave them goddamn blunt wraps alone. See, I'm not going to be faking uppity like y'all and pretend that people don't smoke weed and all this shit. No, people smoke it. But you better find a healthier way because mixing weed and then you don't even know where the weed came from. You don't know what's in it. And then with them blunt wraps and stuff, them cigars, find a different way to help de-stress because this shit is poisonous out here. Then your diet. Let me go back to that. We eat really clean around here. My husband had to gain weight. I don't know if you caught that. So we eat very good and healthy around here. I believe in feeding my family life, not death. But there was a time where we did eat pork and um, unclean things from the sea and lots of sugar, you know, and stuff like that. Now, I don't play that. You ask anybody in my house, white sugar is the devil. And I don't play that. You better get you some honey, get you some agave, some nectar, some raisins or something to sweeten. I sweeten things with honey, personally. So... I just want to say that. No, I don't cook and douse food with um lorry seasoning salt. I don't use that at all. So I wasn't feeding my husband bad. Like I said, he was eating the fried fish almost daily, but he really likes fish. Um, and it was a little more convenient. So we had to regroup, had to go back to packing his lunch like I used to, helping him showing him other places near his job that have healthier options, teaching my kids, when you go out, you look for the healthiest option, flip it over, read the labels. My husband has gotten better with that, reading the labels on things to see, excuse me, if this really is good. Because if it got added sugar, it's no good. The Most High gave us natural things to give us that sweetness. You don't need white sugar. Um... Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to be done, and I want to say lastly, be careful with the snakes that you have in your family. They call family members, but they're really snakes. They don't give a damn about you. Think about what I said. My husband had a heart attack. I had a fucking panic attack. And while I was sitting in the ER waiting to be seen, I called my mother, who knew all of this, and she offered me prayers. Do you understand? Prayers. So... You need to be careful with the amount of energy you spend into your family because when it's needed, it's not going to be reciprocated for you. And then you're going to be hurt and bitter because you don't understand why you would give to people, but they won't give to you. Why would my mother go visit my aunt in the hospital all the time, but don't want to come help me? It's been over a month. I still haven't seen her. I saw my father, but I went over to his house. My father's really busy working and stuff too. And my dad will help. If I ask my dad to watch my kids, he will. My dad runs the business. My mom works for someone. But my mama ain't finna offer. And if I ask her, she gotta work all the time. So a Christian gonna offer you prayers because they're hypocrites. They don't do what the Bible say. They just talk a good game. So to this day, we have not had any help. It's been over a month. And we've kind of just been helping each other. 
getting little naps in when we can, resting when we can. Nobody's going to be there to help us in the way that we help them. Not that you even help people to expect that back, but when you do fall on hard times, when you do need some rest, people texting me, can they help me? I'm like, you going you, you, can you, you gonna help? I need sleep. And if you can't help me get no sleep, how can you help me? You know, cause I did like my sister-in-law was texting, what could she do? Is there anything she could do? And I'm like, what I need, you can't really do. Cause we're past that point in the black community where people willing to come help you with your kids. And I, I get that. We past that point. Ain't nobody coming to that village and take a village. That shit is dead. Ain't nobody finna come help you with your kids. And I ain't talking about so I can go turn up. I'm talking about so I can go in another room and rest my eyes. So thank God for baby gates. Because I have to use the baby gate to lock my daughter in a certain spot so that I can close my eyes for a few minutes. So we got to take care of our bodies, y'all. Quit being in denial. And you men, quit hiding it from your woman. Quit being embarrassed to tell your woman how you feel and what's going on. Because the Bible say that we are a tower against death for y'all. So y'all need to let us know what's going on so we can help y'all. And don't get it twisted. If I don't like what somebody's saying, I'm going to tell them right to their face. Doctors, whoever. I'm going to stand right there by my husband's side like this. Y'all ain't finna do nothing to him inappropriate or make him feel uncomfortable. I'm going to be there to help and support him. And if you don't have a medical background, you better get on Google. And find out what's going on so you can help your husband. Sometimes they need to see specialists. Sometimes you pass the point of a primary doctor and you need to go see a specialist. And this ways around the insurance stuff too. If you don't have insurance, you message me and I'll help you with that part. Because a lot of our men don't have insurance. Their jobs don't provide insurance. It's ways around that. They have coupons, discounts. My husband got a pill that costs $440. For 30 pills. They gave him a coupon. A discount coupon. Because they thought he didn't have insurance initially. Because he didn't have the card in his wallet. Speaking of. Now he got to carry a card in his wallet. Saying he had this stint in this artery. With his medical history and stuff on. This shit got real. Life is has changed. It's not the same. And I'm not finna sugarcoat nothing for nobody. So if you see this video. And you mad you feel a certain type of way. That's because the truth hurts. And I don't care because like the Bible said, that, that that's a two-edged sword. It cut both ways. And if I put me out there and tell you how mad and how I jumped on my husband verbally when he got out the hospital and how wrong I was for that, you think I ain't going to say how you was wrong? It's wrong that ain't nobody came over here to help us. It's wrong that from Thursday to Sunday while my husband was in the hospital, I still had to come home and before I would go to the hospital, cook, make sure my kids had some food because my oldest son doing enough, keeping an eye on them. You know, my kids, I had to kind of just let them run free. They were staying up all late. Their sleep times was off. Everything was off. But I didn't want to be too strict on them because they knew what was going on. So it was just crazy around here. You know, FaceTiming my husband from the hospital bed. So I thank the most high that we came out on this side of things, that we're okay. We're both getting stronger and healthier, you know, just realize who's in your corner and put that energy into them. And God forbid you wanted them, I'm down for my homies type. If you ain't realized by now, your woman is the hardest soldier on your team, not your boys. Cause that's about a team. Your boys ain't even going to want to come to the hospital because they don't like hospitals, but your girl going to come. So Y'all better wisen the hell up and see who's really there for you. Cause I'm done. I ain't doing shit for nobody. And everybody knows that even prior to this. But after this, you think I'm finna go help somebody else in my family who's sick? Why? When my husband got sick and ain't nobody come help us. And I'm not trying to be tit for tat. I'm just trying to be wiser. Cause the unjust balance is an abomination to the most high. It got to be a just balance. Don't don't call me. Call your spouse or whoever the hell else you got in your corner. Or I'll do you one better. I'm going to offer you some prayers. I'm going to pray for you. Because people show their true colors. His side and mine after all of this happened.
But again, I want to say that I was wrong and I've already apologized to my husband, but I'm publicly apologizing for being bitter and angry at him for lost time, so to speak, for energy that he put into everything else when he should have been putting that right over here this way. Because guess who was up in the hospital doing everything? You already know. But that's my job. So I'm not saying it like that. I'm saying our other in our marriage other shit that he could have been doing, but he putting this energy into whoever, whatever, out of town, family, this and that. Uh uh-uh, uh, not no more. So my husband had a heart attack and we're learning how to adjust life. Do you know when he got out the hospital, he couldn't lift anything over twenty pounds? So that means he couldn't even pick up our daughter. He couldn't pick up our daughter. We had to do all the heavy lifting. Not that he couldn't, but he had restrictions. And they're slowly been lifted like he can go back to work now. You know, he had to be off work for a week. You know, mind you, he got a contract. So his customers, like, they know what happened. But even though you had a heart attack, we still want X, Y, Z done. Because life still goes on. And that's something we got to remember while we stressing and making ourselves sick for other people. As soon as you drop after it's, you know, they done talking about it, it ain't hot. Then it's back on to the next. So life has changed for the old family. Our health and our family has become top priority, not what nobody else wants or doing me ripping and running for people, me offering people money, offering to do this to help people out when ain't nobody offering that for me. No one. Definitely don't nobody offer me money. Lord, what was wrong with me for, for offering people money the way I used to do? Lord, I wish I could take all that back. But it is what it is. But I know moving forward. Mm-mm. Nope. It's about me and mine. So I'm going to go ahead and end this. Um, if it's something that I missed, you know, for the sake of shortening the video, just leave a comment. I know there's another brother in this truth who just revealed he had a health scare too. So just because you in the truth or believe the Bible doesn't mean that you can't have a health scare from past mistakes that we've made within our temples, even getting mad and angry. We have to be so careful with getting mad and angry. You know, our blood pressure is being high because we're so upset and bitter at people. You know, so I'm learning to stay in my house, the hell with what y'all doing, and just not concern myself with what people is doing. If somebody called to ask how my husband doing, I just wait. I told my husband, just wait. The beginning going to start off with how he doing. Somewhere in the middle, they're going to say what they really called for. And then at the end, some more fluff. But really, you called for something. Ain't nobody calling to see how I'm doing. If they do, it's always something else. I called to see how you was doing. Oh, and let me tell you about this and about that. I don't care nothing about that. No more do you care about my sick family member. I don't care about your sick family member like that. No, I don't. Because I got to worry about me and my household. My Bible say a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife and the two shall become one. So I've been saying since August 5th, we had a heart attack. Because my husband had a heart attack, I had a heart attack. Maybe not physically, but up here, I had a heart attack too. So know who and what y'all putting your energy and investing in. The Bible say after two admonitions. That's it. You can shake the dust off your feet when you're dealing with a heretic. So if I told you twice to get a generator, if I told you twice to put up food, if I told you twice you need to lose weight, I ain't got to say it no more. Because I did. The blood is off my hands. I did what the Bible required. So I ain't got shit else to say. You live your life and you do what you're going to do and you just keep that shit over there and I'm going to live my life and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And But for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. Shalom.